Namaskar to everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to share our spiritual research on World Heritage Sites. And I would like to start by asking you a quick question. As you can see in this slide, there are five glasses of water. And if we were to offer you these five glasses of water for drinking, which one would you choose? Now, most of you will either choose number one or number five. And rightly so, because they do look the cleanest. But what if I were to tell you that glasses number one and number five have a negative energy aura? In fact, glass number one ranks in the top five most negative samples from close to 1,000 samples worldwide. Would your answer now change? And I can almost see all of you reaching out to choose one or five and then retracting your hand when I gave you this extra piece of information. And this is important because why would anyone in their right mind want to ingest 16 meters of negative aura. Yes, that was the length of the negative aura of glass number one. Now, I would like to zoom out a bit and put a little more context around these five glasses of water. They have all been collected from in and around the premises of the Taj Mahal in Agra, India. And as you can see, sample one is from the water tank just next to the Taj. But samples 3 and 4 are from the Yamuna River that flows silently by the Taj and they were actually one of the most positive samples that we've measured worldwide, even though they are slightly muddy. Even the dust samples from within the Taj and the soil samples that we collected from the Taj compound showed as much as a 10.5 meter negative aura. To measure the aura of these soil and water samples, we used an instrument known as the Universal Aura Scanner. And it has the ability to measure the positivity or negativity in the aura of any object. And it can also tell us the extent of that aura. As you may be aware, the Taj Mahal is synonymous with tourism in India. It has been named as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and as of April 2022, it is one of the 1154 World Heritage Sites, both cultural and natural. And of course, once a monument is given a World Heritage Site status, it becomes a point of World Heritage Tourism. In fact, the Taj, prior to the pandemic, which started in 2020, attracted 7 to 8 million visitors annually. And while people came to look at this famous monument, little did they know they were also stepping into a highly spiritually polluted area where they would most likely acquire a negative aura. The question is, just like the glass of water, if people knew that the premises had high levels of negative vibrations, which would definitely affect them, would they still be keen to visit the Taj? The main reason why the Taj has negative vibrations is that beyond the grand structure, it is basically a tomb. And all tombs and graveyards emit high levels of negativity. Now as per the spiritual principle, like attracts like, negative energies from the subtle realm are also attracted to this hub of negativity, especially when there is a steady flow of millions of people to affect. I represent the Maharishi Adhyatma Vishwa Vidyalaya, also known as the Maharishi University of Spirituality. And founded by His Holiness Dr. Athavle with a background of over 40 years of spiritual research, the university specializes in conducting research into how the spiritual dimension and spiritual vibrations affect our lives. And one aspect of the research we've conducted is about how places affect one at the spiritual level. Now, there are people in our team who have the sixth sense ability to be able to visually perceive the vibrations which are emitted by such monuments. And these drawings are literally like spiritual x-rays 
showing us the actual impact of these monuments. And this is an aerial shot of the river Yamuna flowing past the Taj Mahal. And these are the subtle vibrations that the Sikha artists saw around the river Yamuna and the Taj Mahal. And as you can see out here, the negativity of the Taj is actually being curtailed by the river Yamuna. And it's so ironic that people come from far away to visit the Taj and gain negativity from it, but pay very little attention to the river Yamuna flowing behind it. Uh, and that actually protects us from the Taj and all its negativity ever since the Taj was made centuries ago. Now UNESCO has a 10-point selection requirement to help identify such heritage sites. For example, the first criterion is that the site should represent a masterpiece of human creative genius. But what none of the selection criteria takes into account is the subtle vibrations that a monument emits. While most unsuspecting tourists cannot perceive these subtle vibrations, they are all affected by them to some degree and it can result in feelings of tiredness, getting a headache, nausea, depressive thoughts, becoming irritable, heaviness, etc. However, average tourists will not be able to really correlate that the distress they are experiencing is because of their visit to the heritage site. Actually, all of us have the ability to perceive these subtle vibrations. But due to the lacking of our modern education system, we have not been trained to recognize them. For example, all of us have had a gut feel about something and with no rational explanation really behind it. This is nothing actually but our sixth sense being activated to some degree, which is beyond what our five senses, mind and intellect can perceive or explain. So we conducted an experiment where we measured the aura of the photographs of five world famous heritage sites. The photograph of any object, in this case monuments, contains within it its subtle vibrations. And the photograph also emits these subtle vibrations. So basically by taking a UAS reading of the photograph, we also gain an understanding of the aura of that monument in that photograph. Now the UAS measures two types of negativities in any object's aura. The first one is called IR, which also stands for infrared and indicates a more general type of negative vibrations. Whilst the second is called UV or ultraviolet and is associated with the most serious possibility of affliction by negative energies. So now I would like to take you very quickly through what we found. Firstly, none of the photographs of the five world famous heritage sites had any positive aura. The photograph of the Taj Mahal had an IR or type 1 negativity of 376 meters and a UV or type 2 negativity of 273 meters. And as we discussed, the main reason for these high negative readings is because the Taj is basically a tomb and architecturally also there could be design and layout issues in the Taj which also emits negative vibrations. The next monument needs no introduction. They are the pyramids of Giza. The IR of this photograph was 217 meters and the UV was 185 meters. Here again the purposes of the pyramids were royal tombs built for the pharaohs. The pyramids of Giza are visited by 14 to 15 million people every year. This picture is one of the most famous landmarks of the UK and is known as Stonehenge and is regarded as a British cultural icon. It attracts approximately 800,000 people a year, but its IR was 349 meters and the UV was 272 meters. And one of the reasons for this extensive negativity may lie in the fact that it was actually used as a burial ground 
Our research findings show that burial grounds are most likely to contain high levels of negative vibrations. And there's also been speculation about other possible uses of Stonehenge, such as a place for ancestor worship, a healing site, an astronomical uh, observatory, and even a religious site. The next is the Leaning Tower of Pisa, a bell tower that is one of Italy's most famous landmarks, with 5 million people visiting it every year. It's known worldwide for its nearly 4 degree lean or tilt, the result of an unstable foundation. Its IR was 253 meters and UV was 235 meters. We are still researching as to what are the various causes for the negativity, but two possible causes would be the 4 degree tilt and the unstable foundation, and of course the cemetery nearby. And finally, we measure the photograph of the Colosseum, which is one of Rome's most iconic landmarks, visited annually by 7.6 million people. The Colosseum is famous because it is the site of gladiator battles that took place in the time of the Roman Empire. In ancient times, the Colosseum saw so much of bloodshed and destruction, and it is said that if these bricks could talk, then they would have innumerable gruesome stories to tell. Bloodshed and violence generally leads to high levels of negativity. And this is why the Colosseum showed a negative IR aura of 433 meters and a negative UV aura of 312 meters. Now I have to say, that these are some of the highest negative auras that this instrument has ever captured. And some of you may be thinking, I've been to these places and I've never really felt the negativity. And the simple answer to that is, that is if one's sixth sense has not been activated and if there is a subtle black energy covering around a person, then both these issues actually prevent a person from sensing these vibrations. But what does actually happen to a person's aura when he or she visits a heritage site such as these? For this, we conducted another experiment where we asked two seekers from our spiritual research center to visit a popular heritage site in the western part of India. And like the ones we showed you, this heritage site has a negative aura of uh, IR 298 meters and a UV of 269 meters. Now, these seekers have been doing spiritual practice for over 10 years and their subtle abilities or their sixth sense ability has been awakened. And they are far more sensitive to the subtle vibrations in the environment than the average person. So these are their pictures before entering the premises of this heritage site. And these are their pictures after spending an hour at the heritage site. And you can see the difference in the pictures. We, now we took a UAS reading of both their before and after photographs. In the male seeker, the, the negativity in his aura went up by 180%. And for the female seeker, the negative uh, aura went up by 175%. But more importantly, the positivity in their auras was wiped out completely. And this was also actually reflected in their faces. Now, some of you may be thinking, this paints a really bleak view of these heritage sites. And what we would say to that is that, yes, it does. Because we as a society have chosen the wrong heritage sites to idolize and make popular. For example, this is the Sri Balaji temple in Tirupati, India, and its photograph had absolutely no negative aura. In fact, it had a positive aura of 271 meters. And what we should be doing as a society is looking for such heritage sites that have a positive aura and promoting them for the benefit of humanity. So that when people visit these sites, it, it adds to their positivity and does not subtract from it. Currently, the whole world is tainted 
with more negativity than positivity and the extreme weather events that we are seeing all around us are nature's way of trying to quell this negativity. And that is why even the water samples from the most majestic natural heritage sites such as the Niagara Falls have been found to have negativity in their aura. But there are a few places on earth such as the river Ganga and the river Yamuna where despite the subtle negativity in the environment and the constant pollution, their subtle positivity remains untouched. In fact, our spiritual research has shown that when 20 million people went into the Triveni Sangam during the Shahi Snan, that is during the Kumbh Mela in 2019, the positivity in the river actually increased which is actually really remarkable as with so many people having negative auras nowadays, the river was still able to actually increase its, uh, its positivity. So in the end, I would like to leave you with one point. Positivity in life is everything. This is because it attracts positivity and well-being. And of course, negative vibrations attracts just the opposite and has an adverse effect on people, the flora and the fauna and the environment. And it is for these reasons, ideally one should never be visiting such heritage sites filled with negative vibrations, uh, as we described before. But if you really have to, then we suggest chanting the name of God as this creates a protective sheath that shields you from negativity. Alternatively, you can also chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya as this chant is the most conducive for spiritual protection and spiritual growth in the current times. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask them in the comments. Uh, 